Hi, and welcome to my channel. <laughs> All right, welcome to the video lesson on slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. This will hopefully be a review of middle school algebra, stuff like that. All right, so we're got two learning targets. We're going to make conjectures about the slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines, and then we're going to use slope to determine whether lines are parallel or perpendicular. All right, so we've got a new skate park ramp um, shown above. Um, I cannot skateboard for the life of me. Um, in addition to a wooden ramp, an aluminum rail, not shown, is mounted to the edge of the ramp. While the image of the ramp may conjure thoughts of kickflips, nollies, and nose grinds, there are mathematical forces at, on here as well. Whew. Okay, so you're going to look at the diagram of the ramp and complete the chart below. So describe two parts of the ramp that appear to be parallel. Describe two parts of the ramp that appear to be perpendicular. And then describe two parts of the ramp that appear to be neither of the two. Okay, so remember parallel, lines like this, perpendicular, lines like this, they make an angry angle. Have fun, press pause, try those. Here's some things I found. Again, you can have a different answer, you can have them in a different order. Um, but the top of the ramp and the bottom of the ramp, so BE and DF seem to be parallel, as well as BD, and EF. So those lines are parallel. They look like they have the same slope, but they're not touching. Lines that appear to be perpendicular, I said BC and CD or AD. So BC and either the whole line or part of the line look to be perpendicular. They look to form a right angle. Um, that's probably what you all said the most of. I also said BD and EF or DF. So BD and EF, it may not look like it's a 90 degree angle, but I think it is if you were to look at it face on. Okay. Um, lines that don't appear to be either of the two, I said BE and CD. So BE is up here, CD is over here. Like they're never going to touch because they're in two different planes. Ooh, ow. That's an example. Okay. Or AB and BD. So again, probably different answers than what you had, or maybe you had the same and you thought like me. I don't know. All right. So moving on, we're still going to talk about slopes and skate parks. So recall that slope of a line is the ratio of the vertical change to the horizontal change between two points of a line. If you have points x sub 1 and y sub 1 and x sub 2 and y sub 2, there are the points on a line and the slope is given by m. Explain why the slope can be calculated by the equation m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So hopefully you remember this formula from last year, it is the slope formula. It allows you to calculate the slope between two points. And so again, over here, the slope of a line is the ratio, meaning fraction, of the rise, which is the vertical change, to the run, the horizontal change. So you've probably seen the formula, you've probably seen rise over run before, okay? But the answer, um, the vertical change can be represented by y sub two minus y sub one. Horizontal change can be represented by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So the ratio of the vertical to the horizontal can be written as the vertical over the horizontal. Okay, I would probably not write all of that. I would probably just write the vertical over the horizontal or if you want to write rise over run. Okay, but that's how we use the points. The rise is your change in your y values, so they subtract to them. Your run is the change in your x values. That's why they subtract to them. Rise over run will give you that ratio. All right, so we're going to be using this formula today and rise over run. So the diagram above shows a cross section of the skate ramp and it's railing transposed onto a coordinate grid. So you've got a skate ramp and we're going to add some rails to do some cool tricks on. Okay, so here's my skate ramp over here, the A, B, and D. Here's the railing above it. We're going to calculate the slopes of W, V, and V, U. Okay, there are two different ways to do this. I like the rise over runway and use my graph. So W is here and V is here. So I'm going to draw my slope triangle. I draw my rise over my run. So it rose one and ran three. So the slope of W, V, terrible handwriting, <laughs> is one third. Okay, so let's find the slope of V, U now. 
So I rose one, ran three. One, two, three. So V use slope is also one third. Okay. Now I will show you another way to do this real quick. To do this algebraically, you would first find the point of W being at a negative 10 and then a positive 6. Then you'd find the coordinate point of V being at a negative 7 and then a positive 7. And then we can use our slope formula to find the answer. And so I would subtract my X1s and my Y1s. So again, I'll use this as my X1, this is my Y1, this is my X2, and this is my Y2. And then I would plug my two points into the formula. So 7 minus 6 over x2, negative 7, minus 10. Made a mistake, go me. Okay, so it would be negative 7, take away, the subtraction sign's always there, and then you would put negative 10. Okay, so remember if we have two negatives, it makes a positive. If I simplify the numerator, I get 1. If I simplify the denominator, I get 3. Again, exact same thing. Okay, so I obviously do not suggest this way if you are given a graph, use your tools appropriately. Okay, but that is how you find the slopes of two points using our formula provided. Okay, I'm going to use my rise over run. Explain why the slopes of VW and VU are equivalent, meaning equal, to the slope of XT. So XT is this line in green. It wants me to find the slope of the line in green and V. W and VU are located on the same line, they should have the same slope, okay? So the slope between any two points on a line is going to be the same. Okay, so since WV and UV were both located on XT, anything located on the same line is going to have the same slope. Okay, all right, so you guys are going to try A, B, C, D, and E. I want you to find the slope of those lines. Again, you can use your formula or you can use rise over run. Once you have the slopes of your lines, I want you to try number five, which asks you to compare and contrast the slopes of the lines you found. Okay, so R, B, A, B, and X, T, are they parallel, perpendicular, or neither? And then write down the slopes of what you got for the first answer. Okay, so find these slopes and then complete the table on the next page. Press pause. Okay, so your answer is for A and B, you should have gotten one-third or any equivalent ratio. So you could have had like two six, etc., but just make sure you simplify it. For W, G, and T, J, you should have had negative 3, or you could say negative 3 over 1. And then for A, D, you should have gotten 0. Let me explain W, G, for example. So W, G, they went down. And so if you're going down, that would be a negative 3, and then they went over 1. So the rise is negative, so negative 3 over 1. Okay? So if your line is going down, slope is negative. line is going up, it is positive. And then A, D was a horizontal line. We know the slope of those are zero. If you've got a vertical line, that slope would be undefined. All right, moving on to number five. You've got this table, and so I went ahead and filled in our slopes for us, and now I want to compare and contrast them. So if A, B, and X, T both had a third and a third, that would be parallel. W, G, and T, J had negative three and negative three, so their slopes would also be parallel. So parallel, same slopes. Now the rest of these are not the same. Um, one third and three, hopefully you'll notice that is a reciprocal flipped fraction. And then one is positive and one is negative. So that is called opposite reciprocals. It's an important word for this week. And that means they are perpendicular. So if you have slopes that are opposite reciprocals, that means they're going to form and create a 90 degree angle. So that in geometry, that's how we know we've got 90 degrees. So same thing for the second one it is also perpendicular. So again, make sure one's positive, one's negative, and they're reciprocals. Um, the last two are going to be the neither. 
So they're, these are opposites, but they're not reciprocals. Same thing, opposites, but not reciprocals. So we don't necessarily know um, what happens at their intersection. Okay? All right, that's parallel and perpendicular lines. Okay? So based on the chart, I want you to make a conjecture about the slopes of each types of segments, and I'm pretty sure I gave you the answer. But parallel lines are going to have the same slope. They will have the same slope. Perpendicular segments, they're going to have slopes that are opposite reciprocals or slopes that have the product of negative 1. So where that comes into play is if I were to multiply um, 1 third and negative 3 over 1, 1 and 1 would cancel to a 1, 3 divided by 3 is a 1, and so your answer is a negative 1. So if you multiply the products of perpendicular lines, um, you get negative 1. Segments that are neither parallel nor perpendicular, they have slopes with no special relationship. Okay? All right. So that's parallel and perpendicular. Hopefully it's a review from middle school slash algebra. But you're going to practice now. Okay? So I want you to try all of these. So try 7 through 14. Press pause and then we'll go over the answer. Remember on number 10, the symbol means parallel, and then the symbol means perpendicular. So press pause. Have fun. Answers. Number 7, do the conjectures you wrote in item 6 apply to line segments as well? So number 6, we said parallel have the same slope, perpendicular, or opposite reciprocals, etc. Does that apply to a line segment with endpoints? And the answer is yes. So a segment's a part of a line. A segment's going to have the same slope of the line. Therefore, all the stuff that we talked about for slopes will apply to segments. Number 8, are all horizontal lines parallel? So horizontal lines are this. Use slope to explain how you know. So yes, the slope of any horizontal line is zero. So all horizontal lines have the same slope because, and because they have the same slope, they are parallel. Y'all probably did not write that much. <laughs> and last but not least, JK. JK has a slope of two-fifths. MN has a slope of five-halves. Are these parallel, perpendicular, or neither? And I hope I didn't trick you on this, but it is neither. Okay, you would need one of them to be a negative number. So they're reciprocals, but they need to be an opposite reciprocal. So if that had a negative number, it would totally be perpendicular. All right, let me know if you have any questions on 7, 8, or 9. Well, that's a math joke, 7, 8, 9. Let's move on to number 10. Use slope to support your answers to number 10, 11, and 12. 10 is AB parallel to DC. No. Slope of AB is two-thirds. Slope of DC is one. So they do not have the same slope, so they are not parallel. Number 11 was a no. AB has a slope of two-thirds. AD has a slope of a negative one. The slopes are not opposite reciprocals, so they are not parallel or perpendicular. 12, yes. So DC had a slope of one. AD had a slope of negative one. Therefore, their slopes are opposite reciprocals. Okay? So let me know if you have any questions on that. Um, number 13, line L passes through the origin, the center, and the point 3, 4. What is the slope of a line parallel to that? So you first had to find the slope going through the origin, 0, 0, and then 3, 4. So if you wanted to use your graph and plot your two points that way, or you can use your slope formula, but the answer is 4 thirds. Last but not least, RST is a right angle. If RS has a slope of 3, what must the slope of ST be? So if it's a right angle, I know they're perpendicular. So I was looking for an opposite reciprocal of 3, meaning negative 1 third. All right, guys. So that is it on parallel and perpendicular lines. So you can now head to practice. Thanks for watching, and let me know if you have any questions.